After losing seven times in a row, Barisan National had a point to prove in the Bagan Pinang by election. Never before had the ruling party endured such a string of defeats in by elections. What more when the losses were back to back? Pakatan Rakyat, on the other hand, had to keep the momentum going to realize their Putrajaya ambition amidst the infighting between the coalition, which seems to be continuously reaching new levels with every succeeding month. The determined rivals entered the ring carrying with them internal conflicts within parties and between coalition partners but both determined to write their own versions of how the play on the Bagan Pinang stage will pan out. Shock and awe. Well, not quite perhaps, the Barisa National did deliver a thumping blow to pass in the recent October 11 Bagan Pinang by-election. BN's Isa Samad overwhelms past State Commissioner Zulkifli Muhammad Omar to a 5,435 majority in votes. The most shocking thing which happened during Bagan Pinang by-election is the swing of 42% votes of non-Malays to Barca National. All this happened in the midst of a symbolic state of affairs within Barca National with internal problems brewing within PPP, MIC and most recently MCA. Malaysia Kini recently came back to Bagan Pinang to do an analysis on the phenomenon created by Barisa National in the Bagan Pinang by election by swaying 42% of non Malay votes back into their fold. Marin Priyanan reporting from Bagan Pinang for Malaysia TV. Pass had acknowledged, however, going into the by-election, that the win would be an uphill task in the face of a formidable foe in the diminutive but popular form of Issa Samad, who had been the state's Menteri Besar for 20 years. But perhaps what shocked both the Barisan National and Pakatan Rakyat is, one, the extent of the trouncing, and two, the shift of non-Malay votes to Barisan National. There are many factors that brought defeat to Pakatan, but among the significant mistakes can be attributed to a miscalculated strategy. Jiwi Kataya, the editor of Malaysia Indru, who has followed and written on Indian issues, concluded that Pakatan Rakyat deployed a wrong strategy. All of them, from Anwar down to other MPs, you know, they talked about uh, uh, these uh, submarines bought, commissions made. Uh, they paid no attention. They said, what happened to our land? They promised to give us land title long ago. Now they say they are going to give it to us. And uh, what about housing? Now they say they are going to give it to us. Analysts have worked out that there was a 42% shift in non-Malay votes to Barisa National. This in the midst of a leadership turmoil in the MCA and similar crises within MIC and PPP. Pakatan Rakyat's claim has been that the voters were taken in by gifts, everything from rice cookers, foodstuff and even saris, and promises of funding for the Tamil and Chinese schools within the constituency. Bagi saya, saya tahu kalau dulu sebab tak ada apa-apa bantuan, Sekarang mungkinlah sebab you tahu penduduk sini kan, semuanya dia dah dapat. Apa yang ada dia yang bagi. Last-last minute dia orang bagi. Macam tempat saya, tengok last-last minute lampu menyala. Uh, mestilah orang undi dia bagi saya lah. We spoke to the PKR Vice President and Subang Parliamentarian R. Sivarasa on how effective was the national issue strategy in the campaign. I think the other way to distinguish the six earlier by-elections is that they all took place in states which had some experience of what a Pakatan government would do and did do. Kedah, Penang, Perak. And that is a difference. So in others, voters were able to see, even though for a short while in Perak. Now, Negeri Sembilan has never had that benefit. Kapa parliamentarian S. Manika Vasagam, who rose to fame by championing Indian issues, gives his take on how Barisan National capitalized on their strengths. See, all this, the, the previously we do, we do cultural show, and then we pulled the crowd, and now the, the uh, Barisan National uh, Penyokong Club, Barisan National, 
led by Vigneswar and few others, they started all this. He also stressed on the failure of the Teluk Kemang MP for not creating the bridge much earlier between Pakatan and the people of Bagan Pinang. And uh, you see, the problem is the MP of uh, PKR never show his face. Uh, tak turun padang. Satu tahun, lapan bulan. They also don't know who is the MP. Voters living in and around the Celia area of Bagan Pinang echoed similar sentiments. Corner to corner, Pass was losing the fight to win the hearts of Bagan Pinang. And the past candidate is very deplorable that he didn't go around as, uh, as what is expected of a candidate, you know. He should be everywhere, seen and speaking to people. He wasn't. And the same thing happened to Talit Taman MP, the PKR MP. He was hardly seen anywhere. And one of the main complaints is, in fact, they told him not to come to that area because he had never been seen during the last one and a half years. The Bagan Penang results bucks the trend of the March 2008 general elections when the loose Pakatan Rakyat coalition of DAP, PAS and PKR garnered huge gains from non-Malay votes. Indian voters still fresh from the Hindra rally of November 25th the previous year especially shifted en masse to PR. This continued for almost all the by-elections until Bagan Penang. It was, you know, a, um, a political surge, political awakening uh, among the Indian community. It was the first attempt for them to stand their ground, you know, and demand their rights. Um, such a political awakening, um, you know, will affect an entire generation of voters. Um, perhaps they may shift a little bit to the BN, they may shift back. But it's more important is that they throw off this change, this chains of dependency, and are able to articulate um, their needs and their demands. The trend continued in subsequent by-elections after the general elections. Indians in multiracial DAP, PKR and going under the banner of the PAS Supporters Club were present in full force, screaming Makasakti and PAS Untuk Sumua under the hypnotic beat of the Urumi Melam drums. Though Barista National was expected to win, more so with a candidate like Isa who has served as Menteri Besar for 20 years, but no one predicted that the majority will cross the 2,000 mark. It is argued that the bulk of the votes came from postal votes, but no one expected the non-Malay votes to return to Barisan's fold. Comparing it against the previous by-elections, Asif Rasa calls it a local phenomenon, which is unlikely to be repeated in forthcoming by-elections. Bagan Pinang is largely a localized phenomenon, ranging from not just the Indian voters, Isa himself, I mean, as a candidate, how, despite his tainted background, despite the taint of corruption, because of his sheer immense popularity as a personality, as an individual, that he has developed a relationship with voters over many years, and that carried him through. And, uh, and that's very much a localized phenomenon. You won't get that in other seats. Nevertheless, every politician, strategist, and analyst did conclude that this by-election result serves as a clarion call to Pakatan to wake up from the slumber, stop the infighting and bickering, and work harder to win the support of the people. But I think it's still a long way to go. There are a lot of fundamental issues uh, uh, at stake. Um, I think that if Pakatan Rakyat can deliver the goods in Penang and, and Selangor, um, the voters will uh, consider uh, a, a, a significant shift. So really their, their, their performance in Selangor and uh, Penang will be critical, uh, more so than what perhaps they say in Parliament as an opposition party. Okay, kalau janji-janji itu tak di kota, macam mana? Mesti ah, cepat aja. after 2 years, 2 years lagi apa? Tak lama. Kita tahulah apa dia, dia dapat besok, sama juga. Apa yang dia janji patut dia kota, itu aja kita janji pada dia orang. Will this by-election result serve as the wake-up call for Pakatan Rakyat? We will have to wait and see at the next by-election, if any.